I, I went to high school in Chowchilla. That's where I graduated. There was three or four of us did school one day and went down to Fresno, of course. One was going to join the service. We couldn't because they had to have our parents' signature, you know. So uh, after I graduated out of high school, then my dad told me, now if you want to join the service, I'll go sign for you. So he did. And I went in the service the same day my brother was drafted in the Army. <laughs> mm. He went in the Air Force. <clears throat> and uh, so Dad signed for me and I went in the service. <laughs> went through boot camp in San Diego. And then they put me on a ship and took me to Long Beach and put me on another ship and took me to Hawaii. Wow. And I was, you know, Hawaii probably about uh, October sometime. So I was a new boot camp guy that was initiated fairly quick. <laughs> I've never rested much of my life in the first place. <laughs> um, that's the reason I guess I'm still going at 95. 95 next month, January 20th, 1923. I can remember Pearl Harbor just like it was yesterday. Really, I remember way back, it would be something I'd never forget. You experience something, you generally forget it. If you halfway go through something, you forget part of it. <laughs> and I, I, I was aboard, they put me aboard the USS Vestal. It was a repair ship, and the number on it was AR-4, right with the Arizona. Battleship. Wow. Moored, moored right next to it. In fact, we were going to be doing some repairs on it. Or the Vestal was doing repairs on it already when I went aboard. Whatever they were doing, I don't know. Okay. But the Arizona was in good shape, except it needed some attention, I guess. <clears throat> and at that time, there were probably six or eight battleships in the harbor. <laughs> That's the reason I guess the Japanese picked that as a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were just sitting there chatting and doing whatever, and uh, somebody come in the rec room and said they were having some some uh, practice of some kind over on Hickle Field, which we could see from where we were. It was only just off of the harbor a little ways. And uh, they said this. So, a few of us went out on deck where we could see what was going on, and we saw a ship, a plane flying over, dropping things down on other airplanes, and the other airplanes were blowing up. <laughs> so somebody said, this is not some kind of a demonstration, this is for something for real, and about that time, uh, somebody hollered, it must be a war, and uh, they give general quarters. Everybody hit their battle stations. <laughs> While we was on our battle stations, I saw the captain get blown off the fan tail of our ship into the water. After about three shots, whether we hit anything or not, I, I don't have any idea, but after about three shots, our gun jammed up. So I had nothing to do then. And somebody told me that I, I had a little place on my back. The hip was hot and burned up burning a hole in my t-shirt and put a blister on my back and somebody told me I ought to go down to sick bay and have that looked at. I went down where sick bay was and stepped in that room and here's all, all kinds of different people with all kinds of damage, and a lot more serious injuries than I had so I didn't stay, I just stepped back out again. The only injury I got was that little blister on my back. And after looking in that sick bay place where people had parts of their bodies gone and half their head blown away and things like that, well, I certainly didn't need their attention. Take it away from people that did need it. And as I stepped out of there, the executive officer was standing there and he gave us orders to abandon ship. Well, well I was the first one in the line going down the gangway, but I sure didn't relish jumping out in that oily water with part was on fire. <laughs> and uh, just as I got, I was leading the line going down the back gangway, 
And just as I got to the bottom, the skipper had swam back to the gangway. He asked us where we're going, and I said, well, hell, orders to abandon ship. He said, abandon ship, hell, get back aboard, we're getting underway. Wow. And he did get back aboard, and he did get underway with not as much pressure as it ordinarily takes the ship to move. And the help of a couple of uh, tugboats, he headed right to the beach, and he sunk it in about 20 feet of water instead of next to the Arizona. <laughs> So he did save the ship, and they actually repaired it. We had two bombs went out the bottom, and uh, if he hadn't sunk it in the shallow water, it would have been right next to the Arizona. I, I was surprised with myself that I didn't get fearful about what was going on. Afterwards, I got to thinking, you know, I wonder why I didn't get afraid of all that stuff going on. <laughs> Never went back overseas again. I stayed in Long Beach and San Pedro area till I got discharged. But I never got fearful about it. I just, it, it's an experience I no, remember, but it's one I don't want to go through again. <laughs> that is for sure.